This essay question is truly an essay question. It's all words. There aren't any calculations or numbers that we need to worry about within it. The topic is budgeting, and since that's the topic, this makes it a part one, section B question, and our company is Stark Inc. So we'll go ahead and jump right in with the information. The executives at Stark Inc., a plumbing supply manufacturer, recently reviewed production capacity for the upcoming year and set production budgets. Based on the number of units that they expected to produce, they budgeted sales and set sales targets for each of their retail locations. They did not ask for the input of the individual store managers as they believed that they had sufficient information and they wanted to ensure that the store targets were not easily attainable. When the actual sales numbers started to come in, they were much lower than the budget. They didn't do what they thought. In investigating the variance, the company found that one location had a new competitor that had opened just down the street, and another had significant road construction that impeded the traffic flow and cut down on customers. There were also some new products on the market that were cutting into the company's market share. Because of the missed sales budget, the company had overproduced, resulting in excess inventory, since they didn't sell everything they produced, extra inventory at the end. We have a number of requirements here. We have seven different requirements. First, explain the role of a sales budget in the development of the annual profit plan. Second, identify four factors that should be considered when preparing a sales forecast. Third, which two factors did management fail to consider in this scenario and what was the impact? The fourth requirement, discuss authoritative and participative budgets and identify which type is described in this scenario. Fifth, identify and describe two best practice guidelines for the budget process. Sixth, identify and describe four characteristics that define a successful budgeting process. And seven, discuss the financial impact of excess inventory. So we have seven requirements and we'll just go through them one by one, starting with the first. Explain the role of a sales budget in the development of the annual profit plan. Well, just kind of at a starting point, we know the answer is first. The sales budget is what it all starts with. The sales budget is often regarded as the cornerstone of the entire budget. A firm attains its desired goals through sales. Almost all activities of a firm emanate from efforts to attain sales goals and sales growth. An inaccurate sales forecast can re render the entire budget a futile exercise and imposes costly expenses to the company as well as its suppliers. Okay, so the role of the sales budget is fundamental. It's that cornerstone, good word there, of the annual profit plan. So that's the role of the sales budget. The second requirement, identify four factors that should be considered when preparing a sales forecast. And we have a list here. There's more than four, but we can pick these up. Sales budget should consider current sales level and sales trends of the past few years general economic and industry conditions, competitors' actions and operating plans, pricing policies, credit policies, advertising and promotional activities, unfilled back orders. Okay, any combination of these, and again, I would uh, actually label these one, two, three, four, to make certain you identify for them that you have your four factors, whatever four it is. And again, this isn't a complete list, but identify four factors that should be considered. Third requirement, which two factors did management fail to consider in this scenario and what was the impact? Well, they kind of gave us that information in the, you know, kind of gave us the answer in that information they gave us part of the question. The company failed to consider competitors' actions as well as the general conditions of the company's retail locations. The impact was missed sales, overproduction, and excess inventory. So what that's right there is a nice answer to that, what it is that we failed to do, and what was the impact of that. The company did not prepare the budgets in the right order. Sales budget should be set first based on sales forecast, and then the production budget will be set based on budgeted sales, beginning inventory and desired ending inventory. The company set sales targets based on the number of units they expected to produce, which is reversed from the correct order and failed to consider beginning and desired ending inventory. Number of things that they did wrong there in the way they went through this budgeting process. So the fourth requirement, discuss authoritative and participative budgets and identify which type is described in this scenario. So we need to say what it is, what each of these are, and which was used in this scenario. So 
Authoritative budgeting is a top-down budgeting process where top management prepares the budget for the entire organization, including lower-level operations. It provides better decision-making control than participative budgets. Top management sets overall goals and prepares a budget for operations to attain the goals. Got overall goals, a good term here. However, this type of budget often lacks the commitment of lower-level managers and employees responsible for implementing. Also, it doesn't communicate, it, it dictates, and people are more likely to resent orders and are more willing to work to attain goals they perceive as their own. Okay, so that's authoritative budgeting, very complete there, perhaps a little more complete than it needs to be. Participative budgeting is a bottom-up approach that involves the people affected by the budget, including lower-level employees, in the budgeting process. It is a good communications device. The process of preparing a budget often gives top management a better grasp of the problems their employees face and provides the employees a better understanding of the dilemmas that top management deals with. A participative budget is more likely to gain employee commitment to fulfill the budgetary goal, unless controlled though. It can lead to easy budget targets or targets not in compliance with organization strategy or budget. Effective budgeting processes often combine both approaches. Yeah, say a little kind of in the middle there. But we still have an all-important part of this requirement. We need to say which it is. This company used authoritative budgeting as they did not talk to lower-level managers, which may have helped them identify the new competitors and construction issues. And so clearly the fact that top management did it by themselves led to some things being overlooked, and those things being overlooked cost the company in this process. So a lot of answer there, but good one. The fifth requirement is identify and describe two best practice guidelines for the budget process. Okay, two best practice guidelines for the budget process. Again, we just need to, we don't have to go into great detail with these. The budgeting process should include the formation of a budget committee, the determination of the budget period, specification of budget guidelines, preparation of an initial budget proposal, budget negotiation, review and approval, and budget revisions. And so that's kind of looking at the overall process. A budget committee oversees all budget matters and usually consists of at least one senior manager. The committee issues budget guidelines based on plans emanating from the reviews of the firm's strategy, external and internal factors, goals, and objectives of the budget period, and experience gained from implementing the current budget. Based on the budget guidelines, managers prepare initial budgets and discuss and negotiate their budget proposals with superiors. The budget committee or the chief executive officer gives the final approval of the budget. Okay, a very complete answer there. Perhaps some of it wasn't, wouldn't be necessary to get the full points, but set up well and describes how it is that we should be doing the budgeting process. The sixth requirement, identify and describe four characteristics that define a successful budgeting process. What are the characteristics of that successful budgeting process? Common factors of successful budgets share many factors. Most important is acceptance and support of the budget by all managers and employees. A successful budget often becomes a personalized budget of the people who have the responsibility for carrying it out because they feel it is their budget, not a detached, impersonal, institutional budget. They own the budget and are the ones who bring the budgeted goal to fruition. A budget is more likely to be successful if employees perceive it as a planning and coordinating tool to help them do their jobs, not as a pressure device to squeeze the last drop of their energy out of them. Continuing, nor is a budget likely to be an asset if it is viewed as a tool for management to place blame. A successful budget is a motivating device that helps people work towards the goal of the organization and a better operating result. It is never used as an excuse for not doing things strategically important to the organization. The expression, not in the budget, never crops up at an organization with a successful budget. A successful budget always has technically correct and reasonably accurate numbers. Okay, so correct and accurate. A technically incorrect budget is likely to be ignored. A budget with inaccurate numbers will fail to gain confidence and be rendered useless. Again, a lot of kind of verbiage there in the suggested answer, but we can go through and identify, you know, what are these characteristics of a successful budget? It's motivating. People are, are, have bought into it. People are committed to it. They see it as motivation. It's not going to be a punishment or a penalty. So all of that goes into this answer. And finally, the last requirement, discuss the financial impact of excess inventory. 
Well, excess inventory impacts financials in the following ways, consuming large warehouse space, costing additional fees until use or sale of the inventory, warehousing fees, increasing the risk of inventory obsolescence, and using companies' funds. There's money tied up in that inventory that's just sitting in the warehouse, that inventory that we produced that we never even needed to produce. So we also have that cost in those, in those company funds as well. So this was a budgeting question, and a lot of times we would expect the budgeting question to have a numerical kind of a calculation component to it. This one doesn't, but that's okay. okay this, these suggested answers I think were very complete, um, perhaps a little more complete than they needed to be in some of the situations, giving more information than was asked for, but better that than the other way, better to provide too much rather than too little information, and none of them were extremely excessive. But again, it's just a matter of understanding that budget process, how it's supposed to be set up, what's happening, what the order of the budgets to be produced, what it is that we need to take into account to make certain that we have a good budget that's going to help the company achieve its goals and objectives. And so, just putting this into a theory question, again, one by one through all of those requirements, be giving a complete, concise answer to what it is that they've asked is going to make certain that we get passing points, if not all the points, certainly passing points from this essay question.